What is up, Huda Nation? Welcome inside a brand new edition of the Straight Up Saints podcast presented by Boot Crew Media. A lot of talk around the Saints this Monday, specifically around the draft, and I guess it makes sense. They do have two first-round picks, and everyone wants to know what they're going to do with those picks. And on top of that, Jordan Schultz, NFL insider, comes out and talks about the Saints potentially packaging 16-19, moving up for a quarterback, says they're high on both Malik Willis and Kenny Pickett. Unsurprisingly, that caused quite a reaction on Twitter. A lot of people were against it. Some people were for it, but I would say mostly were against it. Uh, I'll get into that. I'll also talk about the arguments for and against selecting a quarterback on day one in this upcoming draft because I do think this is a way more real situation than maybe some fans want to think. And for others that want this to be a real situation, well, congrats. I do think this is a legitimate situation that the Saints are going to have to figure out over the next two weeks with the draft coming up. So all that right here on the Straight Up Saints podcast. Before I get into that, though, this upcoming week, you have the Pelicans play-in game. And not only do you have a chance to root for the Pelicans to kind of get to that you know, actual first round of the playoffs and see what they can do in a seven-game uh, series, you got a chance to win yourself some money uh, with DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. New customers can bet $5 on any team to win and get $150 in free bets instantly. This is for teams playing in the play-in tournament. And obviously, if you're listening to Straight Up Saints, you're probably a Pelicans fan, I would say. I know it seems kind of odd because I'm currently wearing a Tracy McGrady Magic shirt while recording this, but you can bet $5 with the code BOOT, B-O-O-T, all caps, bet $5 on any NBA team to win their play-in tournament game, and you get $100, uh, $150, excuse me, in free bets instantly. Again, this is DraftKings Sportsbook the official sports betting partner of the NBA. If you or somebody you know has a gambling problem, again, call 1-800-GAMBLER. So let's get into it. Let's get down to business and talk about this Jordan Schultz report, right? So I think Jordan Schultz, you know, he's a nice guy. I've actually had conversations with him off there. Um, they've all gone pretty well. I, I, I personally have no issue with him. Uh, and when it comes to this type of the season, I don't think Jordan Schultz will put something like this out to just drive clicks. I don't I don't agree with that narrative. What I will say, though, is a lot of insiders like a Jordan Schultz, they're going to get information that might be a smokescreen. And I'm not necessarily saying this is definitely going to be a smokescreen, but I do think there's a probability that it could be a smokescreen by either teams picking towards the top that want to drive up that price or maybe by the Saints thinking you're going to zig when they're going to end up zagging. So I think that for a report like this, you take it with a grain of salt. I don't think that the Saints are going to move up, and I'll tell you why in a second. But I do, when I see this, just put it in the back of my mind that yet again, they're linked to a quarterback prospect. And that, for me, is more important than the trading up part. So let me get into the trading up part, because a lot of people have uh, been talking about this. Some people asked me on Twitter. I did answer it there, but I'll just say for anyone who is curious, you know, what's going on, what what would I think or get into with this situation, I just don't think that they would package 16 and 19 to move up. I don't think that is, you know, I think it's possible that if they're, you know, a quarterback that they like, maybe it's Willis, maybe it's Pickett, you know, it's around pick 12 and they still have 16 and 19 and they see one of those guys out there and like, you know what, we want one. Would it surprise me if they packaged pick 16 with a day two pick and maybe a late round pick and they moved up three, maybe two, four spots, whatever it might be, and take one? No, that wouldn't surprise me if they like a quarterback that much. But the reason I'm so skeptical to the idea of them trading 16 and 19 is two. I think the Saints do want two players in this first round. I don't think they made that trade with the Eagles just to use those and move up. I think they want maybe a wide receiver. Maybe they want a quarterback. Maybe they want an offensive lineman. Maybe they want a defensive lineman. But they want two of any of those combinations, right? Why would they make a trade where Philly's really the middleman? Because if your intent was to always move up, wouldn't you probably be having those conversations about, hey, go back to original pick 18 that we owned? What does pick 18 next year's first, a 2024 second, like where does that get us? And that conversation can be had. I just find it odd, at least for me, that they would trade that future first, trade that future second, move pick 18, and they do that swap with Philly where they got 16 and 19. And then you're basically using those 16 and 19 to move up. Like that for me, wouldn't you just go directly to the source instead of using a middleman to kind of navigate your way to that top five pick? For me, that's why I'm a little skeptical of it. And that's why when I see that, 
sure, they're interested in QB. Again, that, that's something that hasn't really been new to us. We've heard it throughout this draft process. But the top five thing for me, I, I just don't. That for me seems a little too rich. So again, that could happen. I'm not going to dismiss it. But from my perspective, I am not really all in on that report. I, I, I don't believe it as much as maybe some others will. And, and some strong reactions were out there. And if you believe it, then I guess you will have a strong reaction. But for me right now, I'm a little skeptical about that. So we'll see what happens there. But the QB position, which is all I'm going to talk about for the rest of this show. So if you don't want to hear about it, if you want to hear about anything else, I apologize. I'll get to that at a later point. But right now, I really, really want to talk about the QB position because there's so much chatter going on. And before I get into it, I do want to say that at the end of the day, I mean, you guys could, you know, sure, I, I podcast and, and sure, uh, you know, I write and there's other things that I will do. I consider myself a fan above all else. And I want that to be clear because I never want to say something on this podcast and make it seem like, no, my opinion means more. or Mine holds more value than you. No, I say this all the time and I truly mean it. I really love the community that Saints Twitter has when everyone's semi-peaceful because we can just have so many interactions and fun debates and I'll learn kind of how you might assess the situation differently from me or maybe it's the same as me. So when I get into this quarterback thing, when I state what agrees with you, cool. And when I say what maybe goes against, just don't take it so personal because I love that back and forth that we could have. And if someone leaves comments on this on this video on YouTube, if that's where you're watching it, or if you're listening to an app or whatever, hit me up and we could have a very friendly uh, conversation. And I love to have that. But I want to make that very clear because I think more, this offseason, more than any other offseason, I think the QB debate, things have gotten a little too personal. I know like people who are stating opinions that doesn't agree with the masses and they're getting ripped. I will say some people are asking for it. I, I, I will say that. There are some people who are putting out takes and they won't be named, but they're putting out takes where I'm like, you are, you're just asking for people to get mad at you. Um, so I guess mission accomplished. But I do think there are other people who are just simply stating how they would assess the situation. And Lord, they're just getting, you know, killed on Twitter. And I'm like, that, that's a little bit too rich for me. But I just wanted to put that out there. When I say something, it doesn't mean it means more than you. It's just, I, I really think this is a delicate situation. And there's almost two groups going at it. You got the draft a quarterback group. You got the, the Jameis group and they're button heads. And I, I'm not saying I'm going to play down the middle. I'm going to talk about both sides and then we'll go from there. So let's jump into it. I don't know if the Saints are going to take quarterback this draft. What I do know though, is until they have a quarterback under contract for long-term and by long-term, I mean the long-term, I mean four years, five years, something of that magnitude. They're going to be in the QB market because that's how the game works. The Saints signed Jameis Winston, and Jameis Winston's contract was like two year 28, but it could escalate to an even richer deal in the 40 millions, you know, with incentives and things of that nature. That is not a bad deal at all. But again, it's two years, and there is no guarantee that those A incentives will hit, and B, that the Saints are going to be fully committed to Jameis Winston past those two years. Andy Dalton was signed exclusively as the backup. I actually saw some people, weirdly enough, talking about Andy Dalton and whether or not, you know, he could start. And I was like, what are we doing? Like, Andy Dalton was signed as the backup. One year, six mil. Let's do that thing. He's the backup. And then Ian Book, who, at this point, if you're trying to sell me on Ian Book, it's not going to happen. It's just, it's not going to happen. And I don't think it will happen. So you have a quarterback on a rookie contract who is right now QB3. You have Andy Dalton, who was signed on a one-year deal exclusively as a backup. And then you have Jameis Winston, who, as of right now, is the starter, should be the starter, but he's only on a two-year deal. This isn't some hot take. Like, there's no quarterback under contract long-term. Outside of, you know, past the 2023 season, that's pretty much it for the Saints in terms of viable options. I believe Ian Book would have one more year, but key word was viable option. So could the Saints draft a quarterback? Absolutely. Could the Saints build around their current quarterback situation? Also, absolutely. Like both situations are possible. But I do think there's this narrative right now floating around like the, the Saints draft a quarterback. It's a crime. And, and if they do that, they're setting back the franchise and it's a mistake. And I, I couldn't disagree with that more because I think when you have two first round picks, as the Saints currently do, you can build for today while planning for tomorrow. Like what, what is stopping the Saints from potentially getting 
a guy who I and many other people love, a Jamison Williams, let's say at 16, which I'm pretty sure guys like Jamison Winston would love throwing to a Jamison Williams. Well, also, if the board shapes out the way you want it, getting a Kenny Pickett or a Matt Corral or a Desmond Ritter or I'm not going to say Malik Willis because I don't see how that works, but maybe a Sam Howell in the second round. Like, what is stopping them from taking a quarterback in this draft? I don't, I don't think there's much. And I know that people really want Jameis to succeed. Hell, I, I can't make this any more clear. I want Jameis to succeed. Why would I want the Saints to not have their quarterback situation figured out? I mean, we, we were one, move, one season removed from the breeze era being over, and I'm t- sitting there to myself like, man, they got to figure this thing out quick because as a fan, you, you almost realize, like, when you don't have a quarterback or set in stone franchise quarterback, it's, it's not, the game is not as fun. It's just, it's not, especially in today's NFL with your Mahomeses and your Josh Allen, your Lamar Jackson's, Justin Herbert's, Joe Burrs, all those dudes, you need your own. And, you know, if it works out, I'd love to see James succeed because then I don't have to worry about this anymore. I don't have to sit here and talk about which side is right and what move the Saints should make in the draft because guess what? The most important position would be on lock. But as of today, it's not on lock. And there are so many people right now that are just so just, I would say, I'm not going to say stubborn because I think that's wrong, but so firm on, man, got to build around James and you can't take a quarterback. And all I'm asking is, where was this energy when the Saints were going to get Deshaun Watson? Because I know a lot of people now who are all in on Jameis Winston, who I remember when they went to go get Deshaun Watson, were all in on Deshaun Watson. And I know Deshaun Watson's a proven commodity. I, I get that. I totally get that he's a proven commodity. And drafting a quarterback, there's nothing proven about that because you have to hope you made the right pick and you got to develop that guy right. And you, there's so many factors. But the Saints literally went through hell and back and we're willing to go through a PR nightmare to get to Sean Watson. And I, I think when you're willing to do that, and then you hear that they've met with Kenny Pickett and Malik Willis and Desmond Ritter and Sam Howell, and now Matt Corral this week, like they're doing a lot of quarterback homework. They're looking around. You can't tell me that they're not thinking about adding another quarterback or getting a, another guy in that room to potentially be the future. You, you just can't tell me that. Like, I'm a big believer in actions speak louder than words. And the Saints can absolutely tell me right now that they believe in Jameis and they feel really good with Jameis. You would need you need to show me. And the minute you show me, that's it. I'm shutting my mouth because you showed me. But when you say that and then your actions are so different, then I'm like, okay, like let's let's figure this out. Because there are so many things that have happened this offseason that just tell me, all right, I I don't know if you truly feel he's your franchise quarterback. And again, he could become it, so I I can't stress that enough. But if they thought he was already it, I don't think they would have made the moves they made this offseason. Like, I don't think if the the Saints thought Jameis Winston was it, they would have risked losing him in free agency while on top of it trading three first-round picks and giving Deshaun Watson a huge deal. But they thought about that, and they, they did pursue that. And then they came back to Jameis because I think they feel safe with Jameis, but I don't know if they necessarily feel great with Jameis. And I do think that's a difference. And, you know, for people that ask me, well, it's okay if they feel safe with Jameis. They were five and two, they're winning games. Don't get that mixed up. Don't get mixed up. What I'm saying with the Saints cannot win with Jameis Winston because I think the Saints can win with Jameis Winston because they were doing it last year. The whole question, though, is do the Saints have the guy that in three, four, five years from now, we're, you know, those big games, elevating talent, elevating talent. Because I watched Joe Burrow, and a lot of people now, and it's been a new thing, talking about, you know, Joe Burrow succeeding only because of his wide receivers. I remember a year ago, everyone wanted Zach Taylor fired, and everyone said he was a terrible coach, and he might very well still be a bad coach. Like, I do think there are some questions there as to whether or not he's a great coach. But there are a lot of people who were going into that and, and basically saying it's not a great situation. And guess what? He overcame that dysfunction. I don't know if there's a quarterback in this class that's going to do that, but I do think it is very funny that now it's like, oh, it's because he had the receivers. Meanwhile, rookie year, and even before Joe Burrow got drafted, we were talking about how, oh, should he not refuse to trade to Cincinnati? Should he go a different route? Like, he's the guy who fixed it all. So again, you can win with the guy you currently have. I know the Saints can do that with the guy they currently have. They can win with. 
Are they going to win because of possibly, but we haven't gotten that answer yet. And for the people who say, you know, you're being unfair. He's definitely the answer. W- what game have we seen yet last year or even during the Tampa Bay tenure that I know for a fact that he is as good as his arm talent dictates. Like that's an important thing too. A lot of people tell me, Hey, Chris, tell me which quarterback prospect right now is better than Jameis Winston, which is so funny to me because no quarterback prospect right now is better than an NFL quarterback. That's already started for six years. Like that is ridiculous. That that's a dumb argument. You're going to win that one every single time because the other guy hasn't played. But I vividly remember how many, you know, good prospects coming out didn't pan out and how many prospects that weren't supposed to be good all of a sudden panned out. So for anyone going into this quarterback draft class and saying they don't like it, that's fine. But I remember people didn't like the Deshaun Watson, Patrick Mahomes draft class. They love Trubisky, but they didn't really love Watson and Mahomes. Those two ended up being top five quarterbacks. And I remember people loved Sam Darnold. The people loved Josh Rosen. Those two are huge draft busts. There are quarterbacks in every draft class. You're going to get at least one that's going to be a franchise quarterback every single year. You want to know how I know that? The shitty draft class that had Dwayne Haskins, you know, God rest that man's soul, and that was an absolute tragedy. That the, the draft class that had Daniel Jones, Drew Locke, it still produced Kyler Murray. Like, there are really, really... There really isn't a draft that I can go through that I don't see at least one franchise quarterback in there. So the odds for me, I think one's going to be in here. Now, can the Saints build around Jameis? That's a popular question. That's a popular narrative. And I don't think that it's a bad route. I don't. The the negative to that route is if it doesn't work out. Because guess what? If it doesn't work out, we're all banking on Sean Payton to come back. We don't know that he's coming back next year. And we don't know that he's coming back in two years from now or in three years from now. Like he might very well be. But let's say he doesn't and the Jameis thing doesn't work out. You don't have a first round pick next year. So what if you do build around him? It doesn't work out. Then the 2023 season's a wash because you don't really have the assets to, to move back in unless you're mortgaging all of the 2024 draft to move in 2023. There's so many factors into all this. Now, another factor. And I've heard this one a lot. Well, what if you draft a quarterback and Jameis Winston goes off? Great. That, that's perfectly fine with me. If the Saints draft a quarterback and Jameis Winston, that pushes and somehow produces the best of Jameis Winston, and we finally see him put everything together that we've known he could have been capable of coming out of Florida State. And obviously there was rough patches, but now he puts it together. Trade the rookie quarterback and Jameis would be your answer. I, like, yes, will you lose value on that pick? Sure. But until you know that you have your franchise quarterback, you're always searching. You're always going to search. And I think if you can find a a middle ground where one of these first-round picks is used on an impact player that will help out your current quarterback while also getting a quarterback in the building, I don't think that's the worst idea in the world. Now, if you want to tell me under no circumstances should the Saints trade 16 and 19 and move up and take a quarterback, that's fine. Like I, I personally don't think that's a great move. But all we're going to remember when this draft is over, whether the Saints take a quarterback or they go wide receiver, offensive tackle, whatever it might be, guys, and you can't say no on this, all we're going to remember is whether or not those picks panned out. It's all we're going to remember because you might hate, you know, the idea of the Saints taking quarterback. But what if the Saints take a quarterback? And what if that quarterback ends up being their next their quarterback for the next 10 years? That's all you're going to remember this draft to be. You're not going to remember that you didn't want the guy. You're not going to remember that you were on team build around Jameis Winston, whatever it might be. What you're going to remember is that it worked out and vice versa. If it doesn't work out, we're not going to remember the arguments we had about who they should take and what they should do. We're going to remember that that was a bust. That's how the drafts work. That's how they always work. Because I remember when the Saints took Ryan Ramchick and I remember so many people hated it and no one remembers who we wanted over Ryan Ramchick now because guess what? Ryan Ramchick ended, be, ended up being a great football player. That's how this shit works, man. I remember so many people hated the Pete Werner pick last year. And I was like, I don't get it. They need a linebacker. Don't get why people hate the pick. Pete Werner ends up being really good rookie year. And now I see so many people excited to watch Pete Werner play next year. And rightfully so, because he's a talented football player. And that works. Peyton Turner. A lot of us question the pick. Why are we still questioning the pick? Because he didn't play last year enough to warrant what they did. If Peyton Turner comes out and balls out, we're all going to forget that we wanted so-and-so over Peyton Turner. Like, that's just how this game works. And on top of it, with the rookie quarterback thing, 
And this is the four argument here. When you have a quarterback on a rookie deal, it's so easy. I'm not going to say so easy, but it's so much more favorable to the team to build around that contract. Like you saw what the Chargers did this offseason, getting J.C. Jackson, trading for Khalil Mack, making a couple of splash signings here and there, retaining Mike Williams. Justin Herbert's getting paid peanuts. Like, that's why they can do that. The Bengals went and just restructured the whole offensive line. Joe Burrow's on a rookie salary. Like, these are the times to do it. I remember when the Rams had Jared Goff, and again, this sucks because, again, they became at the Saints' expense. But the Rams were all in. They traded for Brandon Cooks, and they signed Robert Woods, and they built their defense, and they got some uh, keep to leave and Marcus Peters in there, and stuff like that you can do when you have a rookie quarterback salary. Everything else around it, you can build. And I think that is such a big factor to it. So I don't know if the Saints will take a quarterback. I'm not saying they should take a quarterback, but they should be looking and there's nothing wrong with them looking and there's nothing wrong with saying you want the Saints to take a quarterback, just like there's nothing wrong for you saying you want the Saints to build around Jameis Winston. It's your opinion. It's your right. And both options, I think you can make an argument for. You know, you will you, the argument for building around Jameis Winston, you'll get your answer if you build around him. Either he's not it or he's it. But for me, and I guess this is because I like to hedge my bet here, I think the safest thing would possibly be taking quarterback if you like him. Don't just take a quarterback just to take him. That would be the dumbest thing in the world. But the Saints have done enough homework. I'd imagine like two to three of these quarterbacks. I'm leaning towards two. If they like them, they can still hypothetically, guys, go 16 and 19, one of those being a quarterback, the other one being a wide receiver, let's say. And then you could come around at pick 49, still a premium pick. You can get another wide receiver. You can get an offensive tackle. You can get a Trey McBride. That would really help out your passing game. Like there are, the, there are ways that they can really help out the 2022 team and still get that quarterback. They got four picks in the top 100. You can get three day one players right there. And by day one, I mean playing day one, not day one prospects. But you can get those guys and they could get three potential top 50 to top 75 guys on their board and those could end up being playmakers. So I think that we really need to kind of slow our roll when it comes to saying that taking a quarterback would just set this franchise back. And you know, none of these quarterbacks look good. They haven't played a game yet. Like, I think that's really important. I, you know, there's a lot of people who tweeted at me today specifically. Well, what do you see from Malik Willis or what do you see from Kenny Pickett or they're not better than Jameis or, or whatever. Like, A, like I said before, I know they're not better. They haven't played an NFL game yet. They can't be better. But when you look at prospects, you're not looking specifically at what they did. You're looking at things that they have done and projecting as to what they can do at the next level with more development and more reps and a better staff around them. Like, that's the important thing. So you can tell me Malik Willis struggled at Ole Miss, and I will tell you if you have the right support system around Malik Willis and you let him learn and you play to his strengths and he's surrounded by NFL talent, not Liberty talent, all of a sudden, that works. That works. And I don't want to hear that you got to play in the SEC to be good or that you got to play in a Power 5 to be good. Like, that's just not true. Like, we're seeing guys more and more now taken from a BYU or North Dakota State or even Joe Flacco back then from Delaware. Like, I'm seeing it with my own eyes that we're having guys that don't got to come from SEC schools to be great quarterbacks. So that's important. And I remember when the Chiefs took Patrick Mahomes, everyone said, arm talent's good, but my God, he's inconsistent. And I don't know if he's going to be any good. And he went 10th. And I promise you, in any redraft, he's going to go first. Deshaun Watson, people watched him play well in college. And they said, you know what? Not good enough for me. I like Trubisky. Why? Like, why? Like, and another thing we do, and I find this interesting, and I don't know why we do it for the life of us, and we all do it. I'm a victim of it too. Why do we have double standards for different players? Like, how come, and, I, and I'm not comparing the two prospects because he's better than Kenny Pickett, but how come when Joe Burrow has a great season, it's, okay, he was fantastic, and, and that's it, clear worth taking number one, and he was worth taking, so this is not knocking Joe Burrow. But when Kenny Pickett has one good season, it's a uh, one-year wonder. Like, I, I, I'm just confused about that. I'm very confused about, uh, about that and whether or not they're good. You know, Mac Jones, a lot of people ripped Mac Jones uh, one year, and, and can he be good? And 
I think Mac Jones' ceiling is a little bit limited. He's a little too Kirk Cousins for my liking, but less athletic, which is scary. I thought he played fine. New England made the playoffs. He had some bad games, one of them being against the Saints, but I thought he played okay. I think there are too many people that, that just want to rip on young quarterbacks, and it's like you got to have the right support system. If you got the right support system around them, take a shot. Take a shot. You cannot win today's NFL without a franchise quarterback. So until you have one, you got to look around. And I'm not saying the Saints should absolutely take one. I want to make that very clear. What I'm saying is the Saints are absolutely right for doing their homework, and they should be in the QB market. And that is that. And I'll, and I'll leave with this because I, I do think this is really important. We, as Saints Twitter, have to do a better job of stopping the constant personal digs nonstop. And this has nothing to do with me at this point. If you didn't agree with this, with this you know, argument for taking a rookie quarterback, that is totally okay. I'd love to hear your side. So again, like I'm saying, if you're, you're listening, please on YouTube, leave a comment or, or tweet at me. I'd love to have a friendly discussion about it. But I see so many people calling out other ones or, oh, you're a hot take artist or you don't know what you're saying or you're a, a, a I forgot the word that people are using. I've seen some people use the word goober lately, I, which last time I heard that word was used was for Peyton Manning. So I don't know why that word's making a comeback in the year 2022. But I'm hearing this shit and I'm like, can we not have different opinions about this NFL draft? We're all guessing at the end of the day. Mel Kuyper Jr., Tom McShay, I don't give a, I don't give a shit who it is. We're all guessing because we don't know who's going to end up being that dude in the NFL. They may not be. They may, they, they may be. Like, we, we just don't know. Um, but I, I really do think that's important. And I say this because this year is such a pivotal, this is such a pivotal draft for the Saints, especially with the two first-round picks. Because you're either going to go all in, chips to the table, or chips to the center of the table, and commit to the current, the current quarterback room and the current team, or you're going to commit to the future. And I think that when you have a decision this important, everyone's kind of on edge because we're just waiting for it to happen. You want to rip that Band-Aid off. But it's important while we're waiting on edge to not alienate each other because it's just, it's just a little, in my opinion, it's a little bit much. Like, there are some weekends I just, I'm not going on Twitter anymore because I'm like, I don't, I don't, I'm not in the mood. Like, I'm just not in the mood to argue about, about certain topics because I can't state both sides without getting, you know, the, 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 I don't even know what the right word would be. Just the, the, the cavalry just coming in, you know? And I know some of it's led by one person and, and it's fine, but it, it's just for me, I think we all have to just do a better job. That includes myself. You know, that, that absolutely includes myself. But again, to wrap it all up, till the Saints have a quarterback on a long-term contract, I think they're going to be looking into the quarterback market. It doesn't mean they're going to take one this year, but they're going to look. And if the board falls their way, I can't blame them because A, they know more than me. B, if you think your guy's the guy, you got to go for it and you got to live with the results. And C, they got two first-round picks. I'm just saying, if the Saints walk away with Jamison Williams and Kenny Pickett in the first round, would you be mad about it? Because I sure as hell would not. And that's where I'll leave it at that. But I'm very curious to know what you guys think about this situation. Are you for getting a quarterback? Not trading up, though, and, and using both picks. Let's say you have both first-round picks. Are you for using one of your two first-round picks on a QB? If so, I'd love to know which QB you like the most right now. And then on the flip side, if you're not for that, you're for building just around Jamis. I'd love to hear the argument as to why that's your move. Um, and again, that's just because I just want to see how you guys approach the situation. I'm very curious, um, but we'll see what happens, man. We're about two and a half weeks away from the draft. We're going to get our answers sooner rather than later. Thank God. And we'll see what happens. So that's going to do it for this edition of the Straight Up Saints podcast. If I don't have a new episode out before Wednesday night's game, just no Pelicans fans I'm thinking of you. I'll be rooting for you. See if you guys can win that play-in game on Wednesday night. But that's going to wrap it up for this edition of the Straight Up Saints podcast, the destination for 